Today I'm at the Heart Rhythm Society annual meeting in San Francisco and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. David Kalins, who is a professor of medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. Today I'm talking to David about atrial fibrillation ablation in the elderly. As we know, most of the early clinical trials done with AFib ablation included patients with a mean age in their 50s. And AFib is a huge problem, a huge clinical problem, and the epidemiology is such that we have many elderly patients with atrial fibrillation. So I guess the most important thing to know, David, that I'd like to ask you is, can you tell us what the success of catheter ablation is for patients who have symptomatic atrial fibrillation in the elderly, and maybe define what we mean by elderly, and tell me a little bit about what you know about the success of the procedure in those patients. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ken. I think it's really important to make a couple of definitional statements before we start off too far. Um, it is true that the basic demographic for atrial fibrillation is probably a mean age of 70, 75, um, and it is very, also very true that the ablation patients are usually the late 50s on, on average. So we're not really usually talking about the same sorts of people. A couple of other things change in the elderly. They tend to be um, not as symptomatic during atrial fibrillation. And in fact, that's the old silent other half of the epidemic, that the real importance is diagnosis and getting people on anticoagulation therapy. Um, and yet, sometimes they are. So there's um, people that haven't heard that they're not supposed to be symptomatic at, at age 75, and they are saying the same things that uh, 40 or 50-year-old patients are saying. So I think the series that have looked at ablation of atrial fibrillation in the elderly are really trying to center on those unusual patients, not the mainstream 70 and even 80 year olds, but patients who behave as though they're younger. They tend to be healthier in other ways. And I think that's just a metric for, you know, if you have a lot of other comorbid conditions, they're likely to be bothering you more than the and then the primary symptoms of atrial fibrillation are. If those symptoms can rise to the top and be your primary health concern, you must be pretty healthy otherwise. So we're really talking about a very, very highly selected group of older people with atrial fibrillation. When we look at it from that perspective, um, and again, a very highly selected perspective, the efficacy of the procedure is very similar to that seen in younger patients. Um, and the safety seems to be similar as well. Are there any particular complications that are more likely in elderly patients that you worry about or ways you change the procedure in elderly patients? When we've approached this, it's really been um, very much the same. And when we've looked at our complication rate and some of the other series have looked at complication rate by age, most of them have not found a big difference. The problem with that is that these collections are pretty small. When we wrote a paper on this, we looked at 35 patients who were older than 75. So parsing between you know, different types of complications is pretty hard. Um, very many series have been very much the same. I think, though, what people expected to find is that there'd be a higher risk of stroke, because those patients have such a higher risk of stroke anyway, independent of the procedure and a higher risk of uh, cardiac perforation and tamponade. That really hasn't risen to the top, but um, the, I think the limitations of looking at it with small series need to be acknowledged. So tell me a little bit, um, first of all, when you see a patient who has AFib, I want you to, who's elderly, you don't really give them a different risk-benefit analysis than maybe a younger patient, but what about for cardiologists, uh, community cardiologists? They have an 85-year-old patient with AFib. Tell me a little bit about what we should be telling cardiologists who refer UNI patients for AFib ablations. Is there such a thing as being too old? Is, is there such a thing as you know, the risk being so high? There's certainly such a thing as being too ill, um, both from the standpoint of you know, patients that are less healthy are obviously going to do less well during a procedure, um, but also, and I think more importantly, if you have a lot of things wrong with you, then atrial fibrillation probably isn't worth the risk in the lab to get taken care of. So um, if you're used to thinking about it, and I think you know, there's analogies to everything that cardiologists do, you, know, you would say the same thing about taking an aggressive stance towards coronary artery disease. Um, you have to complain quite a lot at 85 to, to go down that road. Same thing for atrial fibrillation. So if you're healthy and robust 
and have a lot of primary symptoms directly referable to atrial fibrillation, then I think it's worthwhile. The one thing that I think can be very difficult, and again, it's part of cardiology in general, many of our younger patients complain of fatigue or its close cousin of uh, exercise intolerance. In young people, it's very clear that that's atrial fibrillation. When you're 80 or 85, there's all kinds of things that that could be. And so it's, um, it's really making sure that atrial fibrillation rises to the top. So I guess the take home messages are, particularly in the elderly, you have to make sure their symptoms are really due to AFib. We can get pretty good efficacy with catheter ablation in the elderly and reasonable safety in the elderly. Again, it's a risk benefit ratio, but um, these are groups of patients that we're gonna be doing more ablation on in the appropriate patients. Is that pretty good summary? I would agree with each point of that. I think it is going to be, we're gonna be confronted with more and more patients with atrial fibrillation in general and a greater proportion of those are going to be elderly. Well, thank you very much, David. We're glad you took uh, time from your busy schedule at this meeting to join us. It's such an important topic and one that I think most general cardiologists may think that all we do when it comes to ablation, we mostly deal with 50-year-old patients. So I think it's important to get the word out that AFib ablation can be done in elderly patients, particularly if they are have failed in medical therapy and they're symptomatic and we believe the symptoms are from the AFib. I agree, Ken. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Dave.